Hey guys, so today's lessons are going to start the um, multi-week section that we'll use to conclude the semester on automation and customization, largely using Model Builder, uh, which is a tool that really allows you to string multiple processes together to automate and even begin to use some model-specific tools or sort of logic queries like if uh, and for to begin to create something that's a little bit more specialized and customized than what the general tools are in, in ArcGIS. So if you're following along, there's a lot of data that we may refer to today in the April 16th folder. And so I'll make sure for each of the videos that we call out what we're going to use. So for the first one to introduce, I'm just going to have um, East Falls sort of by itself here in yellow, and then something called All Crime, um, which is uh, some information about uh, crime patterns. <clears throat> and I'll bring that in uh, as well. And those are the two that I'm really going to focus on. So the way to get started with a model, um, because you're effectively building a tool with model, you do that in a toolbox. And so what you'll want to do, what I've done is in, in the folder for this week, and you'll do the same in yours, you want to right click, maybe make yourself your own little new folder, call it tools or something. And then in that folder, right click and create new toolbox. So think about this is going to be the package that contains um, any models or any Python scripts or anything sort of that you automate or create on your own. And then so once you're there, you would right click on the toolbox and say uh, new model. Cool. Now, it's going to pick it like this. Uh, it's going to look like nothing happened at first, um, but that's because the model is right here. It's a tab. You can sort of minimize it down if you want and bring it over so that it kind of exists in its own universe. Uh, remember the always cool thing, in my opinion, about um, ArcGIS, right, is whenever you're engaged uh, in, or sorry, ArcPro is whenever you're engaged in sort of a, a layer or something, um, or sort of a different tab, uh, new, new ribbons appear at the top, right? So this is letting you know, hey, here are my options for you uh, for Model Builder, and this is what we're going to work through today. Um, so for these first two videos, we're going to talk about... Um, sort of two branches that you might use Model Builder for. So you typically, in my experience, are going to use Model Builder 1 if you want to run a process in line with an open map. And so what I mean by that is that you have a map open, you have all of your layers, you're going to drag in the layers, you're going to drag in the tools, and you're going to hit run. And everything's going to be sort of run with the map open and uh, the model open, and so they have a direct connection between them totally logical way. I end up running it all the time when I need to iterate or sort of automate processes. The other whoops, um, thing that you might need to do is parametize and actually create an independent tool. And what I mean by that is think of the model not just as, as a model anymore, but like something that's in a toolbox. What if you could double click on it and a box came up just like it would for buffer? or clip or any tool that asked a user to put in inputs and then it would run. And that's sort of the second branch that we'll pick up in the second video. How you develop a model that doesn't know what it's going to take as input, right? That requires maybe a polygon and some points and then it does its thing, but it'll work uniquely for anyone who uses the tool depending on the data that they input. So first thing to do is let's actually drag in some information in here so we're not looking at kind of a white screen. Um, there's many ways to get information into the model, and, and we'll play around with a lot of the muscle memory. But I think the easiest way to start, especially when we're doing that first example, um, you know, that I mentioned, which is where we're kind of building a model that connects to the interface, is literally drag and drop. So drag in East Falls, and there it is. What's the conclusion to draw from this? Well, layers, pieces of data, features show up as blue circles. Uh, sounds like I'm doing kindergarten class. I don't mean to, you know, minimize the information, but it's good to make these clear color graphical connections because that's the point of Model Builder is it reduces complex processes to literal icons so that it's easy to build these sort of string tools or the customized processes. And maybe what I want to do here is I'm going to want to buffer East Falls, right? That might be sort of what I want to do. But before we do that, let's sort of take a look 
uh, and what we have here now that we've brought stuff in. I've got a bunch of options. I can create a new model at any time. Always good to save your model. So I'll save it, and there it is, is model under here. I could rename that a little later. Properties, not something we'll get to yet, uh, but this really is kind of its name, you know, its label, if there's a password to be able to use with it, and parameters, which we're not really using yet, but when we get into parameters, we'll talk a bit more about that. Um, environments is, is an interesting one. So you'll learn as we go through this, an environment, we've used this briefly for raster and a couple other things. This maybe controls where things are saved, the coordinates, sort of the processing extent, the cell size. And the neat thing is, is you could have a tool that defaults to its own environmental setting. So you don't need to worry about, you know, is the user using my tool have the same uh, coordinate structure as me? You could sort of default it um, as a baseline. And we'll learn a little later, you can actually default each process too. So maybe if you have one tool that has um, some environments and another tool that has another, you're able to do that as well. But I'll, I'll wait till we get to that point. Uh, I'll show you this at sort of the end of our work. Um, you know, we won't get to too much Python sort of in this class, but I'll, I'll make certain videos available for those that are interested. What's happening behind the scenes with this model is that it's actually turning itself into a Python script, meaning that behind the scenes, when every time I drag this in, it's actually writing the code, and you theoretically could export the code if you wanted and build a model around it. So I've often found it's a really good way when you're learning Python ArcPy for ArcGIS is you can build stuff in models and then see what the code looks like. Uh, this is a cool one that helps you remember that, you know, what you're looking at here sort of is almost like the map itself. You know, you can pan in and around. You can zoom in and out uh, to check different processes, which is, which is just sort of neat. And it'll make more sense once I have uh, more layers that I'm looking at here. Select is when you want to sort of grab each one and move it around. Um, validate and run, we'll wait till we actually get to that point, but this is, hey, does my model work? And run, actually runs your model. This is what we'll spend a ton of time on. Um, we won't really get to iterators, utilities, or logical yet. Those are the more advanced techniques that we'll start next week. Uh, but we will spend time really on tools and variable, and it's exactly what you think it is. The tools. In fact, any tool that we've ever come across or used. And this is one of the neat things I'll show you in these videos is many of the processes we've done together, we remember like, um, we remember setting up uh, add field or select by attribute by right clicking. We remember geocoding by right clicking. But every tool that we run through that sort of, um, uh, you know, more graphical interface actually has a baseline tool about it. And so all of those processes that we've done, even if they've been right clicked, we can turn them into sort of a tool um, through using this, right? I could find something like add field, which is actually a tool. Calculate field, which we usually just right click on the field. Calculate field is its own tool. Selection, which we'd often come up and just click up here, right? Selection is its own tool. So that's how we're going to get started um, on this one. So I'm going to stop the video here, and then I'll start loading the next one when we actually begin loading in other components and seeing what it looks like when a model runs.